Welcome to the Riot Podcast, where we have practical discussions on how to share your faith, see the news from God's eyes, and answer some of faith's hardest questions. Welcome to the Riot Podcast. This is Bob Shoneman alongside Mac Daddy Pete Robertson. Hey, this is a good day. Hey, we were, we're talking, we were just talking about Bobby and Velveeta. Bobby and Velveeta, they go hand in hand. <laughs> it's a inside joke. Nobody's going to get it. I know. Yeah, we'll it's let it all go. good. Yeah. You don't want to talk about politics today, no. so we won't talk about yeah. um, Bobby Kennedy, the Bobby Kennedy thing and all this <laughs> stuff. And it's been a crazy week. Yeah. Everything. You know what? I was thinking, I know I won't talk about politics for too long, but, but this hit me the other day on one of my walks. And I'm just like, what a crazy six weeks or eight weeks this has been. So you, you back up eight weeks. It was the first, the, the, um, the debate. Right. Uh, and remember, we, we talked about this. Like, why are they having a debate before the conventions? It doesn't make any sense. Right. And I'm like, do you ever remember that happening before? And you're like, no. And we're looking like it's never happened before. They don't, right. don't do debates before you even know who the candidates are. Right. The whole thing was set up. And then instantly, what happens? Like five minutes after the debate, they all turn on Biden. And so now we have a candidate who got actually has won as many primaries as I have. Zero. Exactly the same number <laughs> is is a candidate to be president of the United States. So I know we have we have people listening from 97 countries. I was reminded to mention that today. 97 countries around the world. So I, I apologize that we talk about America a lot, but it, it's our home. It's where yeah. we live. So well, you guys um, want they want to hear about us, anyways. I mean, yeah. they're interested in all this. I think yeah. they they probably hear more about it. You know what? They're probably paying more attention than people that live in America are paying attention. Well, when we were over there. In April and May, yeah, it was on. Isn't that crazy? Uh-huh. It's like they know more about yeah. what's going on than yeah. the, the average Joe on the street. Yeah. But I mean, they, I guess they're, they're partisan over there, uh, especially in the uh, probably in the UK area. But I mean, it was, it was pretty fair both across the boards just reporting the news. Well, you probably here, have a better chance of actually getting the news. Or here, it's yeah, all, it was, it's all, it's all spin. You know, it's talking about politics. I, would, I thought you didn't want to talk about Well, politics. I have to, because I want to go to, this is a perfect candidate for me. <laughs> okay, the candidate comes up and says, you know what? We're a screwed up nation, and we need to repent of our sins. And we talked about this before. And we need to, where this this leader is calling us to follow God like our, our original oh, founding fathers. Lord, okay? please bring us someone like that. Yeah, so we're paying for that. And then they teach us, they, they start showing us where our culture is messed up, like, you know, taking your cart back when you're done at the grocery store and putting it away. Oh, now you're going to hit on my pet peeves. Yeah. I think that would be a great candidate that they say, Hey, listen, if you're done with it, don't be lazy and leave it there. Take your cart back and put it away. Or you're at a fast food restaurant and your, your stuff, you know, you don't leave your, your buns and your mess all over the place. Get an actual paper towel, wipe it down, clean it up, put your stuff in the trash and then leave. That's what our a good candidate would say that, don't you think? Or if you're at Starbucks and you're putting milk and cream and sugar in your coffee, you clean up afterwards. Yeah. Let me give you another one. What? Hold the door for somebody. Yeah. Don't let a door slam in front of their face. Yeah. So just take that extra second. Yeah. Wait, hold the door, let them walk through. Yeah. And then let me switch it. What? If you're the person that walked through, thank the person yes. for holding the door for you. Yes. Or when you <laughs> when somebody lets you in. Thank them. Wave at them when you're right. driving. Wave at them and say thank oh, you for letting me in. Oh, don't even get me into driving. Yeah. There's turn signals in your car for a reason. Yes, use them. Let other people know what you're doing. It makes sense. You know, All of this would make the world a better place. But no, we're so self-consumed. Yeah. This world is all about me. I'm yeah. going to I'm gonna leave my shopping cart out. Somebody yeah. also get it. You know that's driving up the prices of your groceries. That means I got to hire an extra person to go out and get the carts and bring it in. So- Stop complaining about your grocery prices if you don't return your cart. Yeah. Oh, you got me going now. Or we could be like Aldi's and charge everybody a quarter to use their cart, and then you have to bring it back. Yeah. Well, that's a whole different mindset. That's just because. Never but, mind. But I think don't about know. It. Think about it. another thing is like you're driving, and all of a sudden somebody comes and they go in the crosswalk, right? And they start walking, and then they know that you're there. A pedestrian. Yeah, but they go really, really slow. While you're waiting for them. While you're waiting for them. Yeah. What do you normally do when, when you're coming up to a crosswalk and you see a car there? You go fast. You walk faster to get past. And then you wave at them and say, thank you for yeah. waiting for me. Feel a little sense of urgency. Not anymore. Thank them. Give them a nod. Give them a wave. We need a candidate that says, listen, when you're going across a crosswalk and a car is coming, they're waiting for you. Thank them and walk faster so that they can get past. Unless you can't. If you can't physically can't, that's okay. But the majority of the people, they're not. 
doing that. It's just not not. Or maybe nice. we're just not doing a good enough job demonstrating what that lifestyle looks like, because I think it's contagious. Yeah, I we think- talked about this earlier. It's contagious both ways. Could we go back to, I mean, is this too much? Could we go back to yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am? Could we go back to uh, thank you, please, you know? Well, I know, but. But not always. No. I'm just saying. Sometimes I have to call her out on it. But I mean, we need a, we need a candidate world uh, in the world. I think this is not just the United States, but a candidate that. He just called for one world government. Did you hear this? I'm calling for one world unity and and showing (laughs) respect and love. And doing the right thing, having moral integrity, a be above reproach. Why is any of this important, though, Pete? Why is it important? Because it just reflects how God is. God, I think Jesus wants us to do our very best to bring him glory. And I think cleanliness is doing our very best. I think being polite is being our very best. I think walking across the crosswalk fast when somebody is waiting and thanking them for waiting is being doing our very best. And all of this sounds like Love your neighbor like yourself. Yeah, it is. It's kind of biblical. <laughs> I, I, anyway. Thanks for letting us vent. Yeah, you got you let me talk about politics. So there you go. I'm like, <laughs> well, it, as we sit today, we are exactly 70 days from the U.S. presidential election. So we're just we got we're, that going for us. We're with you all and we're praying for our nation. And I think let's just stop arguing let's just start loving each other let's and return your shopping cart. I, I think this whole bobby kennedy and donald trump thing of unifying the unified party is what they're calling it i don't know but if we could just find a way you know to just work together love each other and stop hating on everybody i mean if you're gonna have if you disagree with the policy that's fine let's have a discussion about it i don't see anything wrong with it you know, it's just hating on each other and calling me names and putting each other down. And But do we live in a climate where you can even have those conversations anymore? That's yeah. the challenge. And I think that goes back to our pet peeves. If we were doing all of those things, we were loving on each other and we were, you know, using our turn signals, returning our shopping carts. Then when a policy comes up, yeah. maybe we care enough about each other where we can actually listen and talk about it. Yeah. But now we don't. We just jump on. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. Yeah. Or I'm right. I'm right. Whatever. Yeah. I would love to know what our audience thinks. So you guys, if you guys are listening to this, what is your thoughts on on this little shopping pep- carts? Yeah, just our whole pet peeve there. I mean, reach out to us on the riotpodcast.com or we go might to our, just be just go, crazy. Go to our social media and let us know. I mean, we would love to hear your guys' thoughts. But no, I don't think we're crazy. I Maybe think, it just doesn't matter. I think I think the the world as a whole is good with the politeness, you know? I don't know. Just I don't think we're crazy. I think it makes the world a better place. It does. You so, look out for others. I mean, today's show is called We Reap What We Sow. So if you're going to sow destruction, you're going to sow ugliness. I thought this was How to Get Two Wives. That's not the name of the title of the show? No, it's it's How to Get Two Wives and Two Maidservants. Well, it's really four wives. Yeah. <laughs> God help us. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna, going to talk about Genesis 29 today, guys. I'll give you a little heads up. That's where yeah. that's where that's coming from. So yeah. we'll dive into it shortly. But before we do that, we have pray. to pray. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, help us. Uh, Heavenly Father, you are so good. And uh, thank you for letting us vent a little bit today. Thank you for the opportunity to do this show. Lord, be with our listeners. I pray that um, just from listening to this today, Lord, they would be drawn closer to you, that they would kind of see a little bit more of who you are and uh, and learn something today, Lord. I pray that uh, we would all learn that there there are consequences to our actions yeah. and you will reap what you sow. It's just uh, it's just one of your laws of nature. Mm. I mean, it, it's just true. And uh, I, I pray that um, as we dive through back into your book today, uh, into Genesis, that uh, we would all learn something more about you today. So, Father, we love you. We give you this show now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. All so right. ready to jump in, Pete? Yeah. We reap what we sow, sir. Okay. In this week's show, we pick back up with Jacob. Remember Jacob? Yeah. It's uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He's like the third one, right? Yes. All right. Of the pillars. Of the pillars. He's mm-hmm. the, yes. You know, you've been to Zion National Park. Yeah. Isn't that what they call the, yes. the, the three peaks uh-huh. there? The patriarchs. The patriarch. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, that's pretty cool. If you've never been to Zion National Park, go. Gotta go. Highly, gorgeous. highly, highly recommend. Yeah. It's gorgeous. It's in Utah. Yes, it is. Southern Utah. Ooh. Southwest Ooh. Utah. Anyway, um, Genesis chapter 29. As we all know, 
life is not easy. Well, I mean, for Pete, Pete's life is easy. But for most of us, Truth. life Truth. is not easy. Truth. Yeah. What life does to us depends a great deal on what life finds in us. Well, J Bob knows that we're going through a stretching season, and so that's why he said it to be funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. another inside joke. Sorry, yeah, guys. It's okay. Jacob could have easily left his family problems behind, but he had to take along his biggest problem. You know what that was, Pete? Yeah. Himself. Yeah. <laughs> this chapter starts a 20-year journey. <laughs> Excuse me. A 20-year journey of how... Many painful trials in Laban's, his uncle's house. Laban's. Laban. How did I say that? What did I say? Laban. Laban. That sounds cool, though. I, Kamala, Kamala, whatever. Yeah. Um, painful trials in, say it again. No, Laban. Laban. No, it's Laban. Oh, my goodness. You're killing me. <laughs> Laban. So there should be a, there should be a line over the A, the sure. first A. Laban. Laban. Yeah. Laban. Or both of them, actually. It could Laban's. be Laban. I don't know. We, we weren't there. How do we know how they said it? Then why are you correcting me? Well, it's because that's how they say it. Maybe it's LeBron. Maybe no, it's, it's Le maybe it's they Laban. play basketball. I listen to them the way they pronounce it is Laban. So we're just Who? going with that. Who's they? Just the people as a whole. When you, <laughs> when you listen to it. <laughs> how, do they, how do they say it in Hebrew? So Laban? then stop correcting my pronunciation. Yeah, I have no idea. So Laban, no Laban. Now you really got me confused. It's okay. Now they're anyway, all confused. What are we talking on. about? We're talking about a 20-year journey of his, his uncle. Yes. He's he's caused Jacob to it's have his many mother's problems. brother. His yeah. mother's brother. Yes. That's what that's I say the context. That right? Yeah. Jacob's okay, going through 20 years, and Laban is a part of that. <laughs> but through it all, in the end, he would become God's man to accomplish God's will. This is not an ancient story that is not relevant for today. In fact. This is a contemporary story, Pete. Yes. All about us who are making important decisions on the road of life. Yes. Daily decisions that can determine that determine our character and ultimate destiny. Yeah, we're gonna learn a lot from what Jacob went through. Yes, we are. How Laban put him through it. Laban. 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 Yeah. Laban. I got it right now. Yeah, you can say it however you oh, want. You're right. Goodness. Well, I'm gonna have to because I'm yeah. gonna start reading Genesis chapter 29 right now. Yeah, but All don't right. call Rachel non-Rachel. Don't say Rochelle. Rochelle. No. It's Rachel. Are you sure? Yeah, you can go Laban or Laban if you want. Google that in the Hebrew and see how they say it. Okay. And Leah? Or is it Leah? Leah, but don't... You can say Princess <laughs> Leah if you want. You guys... Uh, we are off the rails today, here's, guys. Sorry. Here's the context of what we're saying. When you come to these things in the Bible, it's okay. You could say it however you want. If you mess it up, who cares? Just do your best. And sometimes I don't even say them at all. I just pass over it. Because it's too much. Just so. skip it over. Yeah. I've heard pastors say, just say whatever you're going to say. Yeah. The people listening aren't going to know the difference. No, it's anyway. good. Just move on. <laughs> just move on. <laughs> All right. Genesis 29, verses 1 through 13. Here we go. Then Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the people of the east. As he looked, he saw a well in the field. And behold, three flocks of sheep lying beside it. Far out of that well, the flocks were watered. The stone on the well's mouth was large. Interesting. Um. Yes. Yes. And interesting that he notices that. And when all flocks were gathered there, the shepherds would roll the stone from the mouth of the well and the and water the sheep and put the stone back in its place over the mouth of the well. I'm assuming that's after the sheep have been watered. Jacob said to them, brothers, where do you come from? They said, we are from Haran. Did I say that right? There's a heron. No, it's Haran. It's Haran. Okay. He said to them, do you know Laban, uh, Laban, the, like, oh my goodness, do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? Did I say that right? Nahor? Okay. Yeah. They said, we know him, which is kind of cool. He said to them, it is well with him, or is it well with him? He's asking them a question. They said, it is well. And see, Rachel, his daughter, is coming with the sheep. He said, behold, it is still high in the day. It is not time for livestock to be gathered together. Water the sheep and go, pasture. But they said, we cannot until all the flocks are gathered. He's trying to get rid of them. He's like, hey, this beautiful woman. He wants coming. to be alone. Yeah, he's really. With Rachel. To, yeah, that's what's happening. Right. Rachel. With Rachel. But they said, we cannot until all the flocks are gathered together and the stone is rolled from the mouth of the well. Then we will water the sheep. So they're waiting. Maybe they were waiting for Rachel to get there. Okay. While he was speaking with them, I mean, she's single, right? Yep. And ready to mingle. While he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with his father's sheep for the for she was a shepherdess. You don't see that with that word often, shepherdess. No. Now, as soon as Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, seems redundant. We already knew it anyway. 
Jacob came near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth. He did it all by himself, or you think he helped others? I think he did it by himself. Okay. On a good track. So the other shepherds could have probably done it. Anyway, Jacob came near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban's, his mother's brother, again. They, then, this is interesting, Pete. This kind of jumped out to me. He yeah. just met this girl, right? Right. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and wept aloud. I'm yeah. trying to picture that. So not only he kissed her, he's crying. He's I having, think he's just happy, right? Oh, he's having He's party. excited. Oh, yeah. Party time. Okay. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's kinsman and that he was Rebecca's son, and she ran and told her father. Yeah. One more verse. As soon as Laban heard the news about Jacob, his sister's son, and they are driving home yeah. that, that they're related. Paul does that in his writing too. It's kind of crazy. Just, okay, yeah. we get it. Laban is related to Jacob. Jacob is his nephew, I guess. Right. He ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to the house. Jacob told Laban all these things. They probably did like a cheek thing or something. Yeah, that's what I'm picturing. Yeah. Now, did he kiss Rachel on the cheek too? Or is that the... Uh... I wouldn't. Good. I would have went right for the lip. <laughs> Assuming you were a single man looking for a bride. Sure. Yes, I get it. I get it. All right. So here we go. I know. I apologize, guys. I'm a little crazy. No, I don't good. know what's gotten into me today. That's good. You got me fired I up like about the shopping kind of carts. These are fun. All right. So let's get started. Jesus made it Jesus made it clear in Matthew 19, verses 1 through 12, that not everybody is supposed to get married. But with Jacob, marriage was not an option. It was an obligation. Yeah, now, really you know why that is? Yeah. Well, I think I know why. Why? Because there's already been a covenant with Abraham saying his offspring will be like yeah. sand of the shore. Yeah. Or as sand of the, no, that's something else. Sand of the, sea, the stars shores. in the sky and yeah. the sands on the seashore. Yeah. So, I mean, if, that's yeah. hard to do if you don't have in a wife. That, in that culture, you're not having babies not being married. It's You're being stoned to death. It's just it's just not happening. Right. So the context is, yeah, he's this is an obligation. He has to get married. When his mom and dad sent him away, he's basically saying, you're getting married, right. period. He's like, okay, I'll do it. You're going to go by yourself. And don't, and don't find one it. of those evil women. Pick, right. Yeah, don't, yeah. Do a, don't do a heathen woman. <laughs> right. No you're going to find the right ones. Yeah. You got to to know what we're talking about. You got to go back to two weeks show again, yep. I think. Yep. So in our past shows, we explored how God made a covenant with Abraham, like you said, which was intended to be carried on through many generations. The fulfillment of the promises God gave Abraham in Genesis 12 hinged on Jacob finding a wife and building a family with her. So God already knew that this was going to happen, but here is Jacob now living it out loud, right? He's going through the process. He's He went through the wilderness. He's he's now come and he's now seeing her and there's just joy that's happening in him, right? So he's like, okay, finally, there's there's hope here, right? Um, ultimately leading to the formation of the people of Israel. So Jacob, when we follow the lineage, we follow it down, we'll see the people of Israel because we're going to see later that Jacob's name becomes Israel. So there's going to be a change there. This nation would later bring forth the promised redeemer. We know that the Messiah, Jesus came through his lineage. Okay. And as we now understand through Abraham, Isaac and Jacob's bloodline, Jesus came into the world as God in human flesh sacrificing his life to save us from all sin and the eternal separation from God. So what is happening here, understand that it, it's a story that's being get, written for us to be able to say that God had this plan all along. Okay, so this is part of it. We're joining in on God's plan. We're, we're going back to be able to see what, he, what God was doing, how he was orchestrating it, and he's using real people, real emotions, Real ups and downs, you know, that we're going to see a lot of struggles in this. He's going to show us everything so that we can relate to it, so that we can understand. But we can also see that God has always been at work. And, and what he's doing in our lives right now, God is at work and he's, and he's moving us forward. He's moving. If we're surrendered to God and we're doing that, he's moving us forward. He has a plan. There's an ultimate outcome here. And we're seeing that the ultimate outcome here was the Messiah. So this led to the Messiah for the, the Redeemer. And if that didn't happen, the Messiah doesn't come through that lineage. I mean, obviously God could have done it through something different, but this is what God chose. This was his plan. This was his plan. So he chose this, and we're just seeing now behind the scenes of what God has already orchestrated. And so All right. Well, strengthened by the gracious promises that God had given to him at Bethel, as we discussed two shows ago, Jacob continued his journey to 
Padam Aram. Yeah. Did I get that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. This journey brings to mind the experience of Abraham's servant when he sought a wife for Isaac back in Genesis 24, a story Jacob had undoubtedly heard countless times. While there's no recorded instance of Jacob praying as his grandfather's servant did, it is possible that Jacob sought God's guidance throughout his long journey. I mean, you, he, he saw the, the ladder, you know, we call it Jacob's ladder. We he saw these angels. He sees God up there at the top. I, I mean, he comes face to face with God. I mean, he knows he's supernatural. He's divine. He's been changed. We show, we show, we're going to talk about his character here. You could tell there's a difference. There's a change in him. His mentality's changed. He's looking at things differently. He's no longer the sojourner on his, all by himself going up. God is saying, no, I'm here with you. I have a plan. I'm going to fulfill this plan through you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to guide for you. I'm going to provide for you. So, yeah. Is it possible that Jacob sought God's guidance through his long journey? I mean, come on. I think, I think, I think obvious that, yes, he's, you know, he knows enough. And then now coming face to face with God, he knows enough that I'm talking to him. I think that's why he was in tears. Oh, yeah. It's just like because God answered Guys, you're prayer. so good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He sees Rachel and like, this is God answering my prayer. Yeah, especially after his experience at Bethel. I mean, for sure. Um, but it's likely that Jacob prayed for guidance throughout his journey. When he finally saw Rachel, it appeared to be love at first sight, and he seemed genuinely joyful. Um, the passage suggests that Jacob tried to expedite the shepherd's task of watering their flocks so they would leave, enabling him to have time alone with Rachel. I could definitely relate to this as a man. I, I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, if this was me, like, I'm just, I'm going, wow, she's like, pretty. Wow, I like this. You meet this pretty girl and you're yeah. like telling your boys, uh, guys, go get a milkshake. Get out of here. Get I out mean, here. With my wife, I knew <laughs> when I saw her at my brother's or her brother's baseball game, I immediately, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm 12 years old. You got, okay, you got to understand this. I immediately knew that she was the one. I don't know. I just knew. I'm thinking that kind of happened here with, with Jacob. I think he just immediately knew. I think in his heart, it resonated like, hey, she's the one. Yeah. And I think there's weeping that came from that. You know, now he's more mature. He's older. He's not a little 12-year-old kid. Like, what are you talking about, you crazy nut? You know, I've always been that way. I even asked my wife to marry me at that age. I just knew. So I think I can relate to that. And she said, no, she said no forever <laughs> to get her to say yes, pulling teeth. That's a whole different show. Yeah. Uh, right. That's funny. All right. Rachel didn't say no, though. No, no. In fact, she ran to her dad. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. Another noteworthy detail is how Jacob immediately began to serve Rachel as if their courtship had already begun. The stone covering the well was large and heavy, yet Jacob managed to move it so he could water Rachel's flock. I think there's supernatural strength there. I think that the, the adrenaline... I think he was just so pumped up I'm because multiple guys did it before and he's doing it by himself. So I, I think he's just trying to show off for the girl. That's part of it. I'm sure of it because us guys do <laughs> Look that. How but, I am. but again, he's probably so pumped <laughs> up that he was able to do it. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway. I don't know. When we read the Bible, I'm looking at it like that. I'm like, wait, how did that happen? You're What's going kinda, on? You're kind of coloring in parts of the picture. But I think we should. Bit. I mean, it's like, come on. There's something. Why did they put it in there anyway? Well, it's big, it's heavy, it's so hard, but he's doing it. Why would they put it in there? You just said he moved the stone, right? Yeah, why not Everybody ask the ask the other questions? Like, oh my gosh, Maybe was he, he pumped was up? Was he shadowing the stone being rolled away on well, Easter I know. Sunday? A whole, that's a whole different story. That's another story. I've oh, used okay. this as a Have you? story before. Yes. So. Man, I thought I just made that up. Oh, oh well. <clears throat> Upon introducing himself, he kissed her, and she ran to tell her dad the news. No, Laban. Laban. Yeah. Isn't Laban her dad? Yeah, but you didn't want to say Laban. <laughs> <laughs> this this suggests that she also was very fond of him. Yes. I yes. think she's running. She's like, ooh, he's pretty nice looking. Yeah. Yeah, she knew in her heart. But in ancient East, uh, family ties were profoundly strong, and it was customary for visiting relatives, even those meeting for the first time, to be warmly welcomed into the home of their kin. I mean, oh, was so the normal. kiss wasn't special. I was thinking it was special. I think it's kind of special. Good. No. Yeah, I'm not going to look Good. Don't mess up my, yeah. my... The providence of God, so God's will, he's in charge of everything. The providence of God is evident in this meeting. Jacob wept, expressing joy and relief as his long journey began to take a positive turn. Perhaps God opened his eyes to, to how Abraham's servant must have felt when he went to search of Isaac's wife, Jacob's mother, Rebecca, 
um, this can certainly be seen as the hand of God at work in his, in this situation, both his dad and himself meeting their future bride at the well. I thought that was kind of mm, different. Yeah. So, so, you know, I, it's not, I don't think there's coincidences ever. I think God has a divine plan and the providence of God, God is in charge. And it's like almost, it's exactly the same here. He is at the well bride comes his, his dad, his mom, same thing. There's too many when you're reading the Bible, you, you need to see these things, right? Ask the questions. Wait, what's going on here? The don't well just, is the source of life. Right. Don't just read through it and not see anything. It's like, all right, let's look at this. This happened somewhere else, right? Hmm. What emotions would you be experiencing, right? What emotions would you be feeling? It's not saying that this is exactly what's happening. We're just saying, what would happen? I think there's a relief joy here. We think that there's like, wow, I'm finally done with this journey. This has been hard. This has been long. It's been going on and on and on. There's probably so much emotions right here that are coming out, you know, and then now he sees this, ah, oh, praise the Lord, you know, kind of thing. I don't know. He wept. Oh, we know. That's so, read into it however you want. We just know that there's something. Color. Like, Add in a little color. All we're, right. We're doing the Chosen series. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's so good. Yeah. Unbelievers might call this event a fortunate coincidence, <laughs> but believers would see it as a gracious leading of the hand of God. In the life of a trusting Christian, there are no accidents, there are no coincidences, only divine appointments. And, I, and again, it's when you're reading the Bible, when you slow down and you're like, and you ask these questions, and if, if I've seen this before, is there something relevant here? You're, these things are going to be popping in your head. Whoa, that's not, this is not by act. You know, there, this divine appointment is by God. This is the providence of God. There's a week and there's no way to look at it otherwise. Right. So we also see this as the beginning of some positive changes in the character of Jacob. This is something we're going to start noticing here as we move forward in, in the coming chapter. Everything changes in people's lives after they come into the presence of Jesus, like Jacob did at Bethel. If you've come into face to face with God, broken before him, in his throne room, face to face, and he's revealed himself to you, and he's magnified his love to you, you are changed. Okay, it, And the, if you want to be more changed and, and to be more filled with goodness and be more filled with joy and love, you have to aggressively adjust your life to be in his presence. You have to not fight against circumstances and fight against things that are happening in your life. You have to surrender it. And you have to just come emptied and broken before God. If you can continually do that, yes, you're going to wrestle with God at times. Yes, you're going to have to work out your salvation to try to understand what the heck's going on. But if you can get to that point where you're completely surrendered to God, there's going to be a change in you. There's going to be a transformation. And we're starting to see here a, a slight transformation or um, a character change in Jacob. Here we see Jacob's boldness. Remember when we well, he didn't have really this boldness, he was a mama's boy right? He didn't have this boldness. Mama's telling him what to do and he's doing it. We don't see this boldness too much here with Jacob, right? And he confronted the shepherds. He moved the stone. Here's being macho, right? He's taking initiative. Well, he didn't take the initiative with that. That was Esau. Esau is the one that went up, the macho guy and so forth. Uh, Jacob didn't have that, but here he is. He's showing this. There's a character change. There's something different about him and, and how he introduced himself to Rachel. It was like, hey, there's confidence here. And there's boldness. There's confidence. He's taking initiative. This is a changed person. This is someone that's that caught the vision. This is someone that understands his purpose. This is someone that understands what he's supposed to do. He saw what Jesus told him to do. He got it, right? We're seeing that. You know, slow down. When you're reading this, you're, you can start seeing these things. And look at his honesty as he told the story to Laban. Um, Laban, all characteristics Jake and Jacob never showed in previous chapters, but he is now after the meeting face to face with God. So I, I know this is true for my own life. That, that when I'm in God's presence and things are being changed in my own life, I come out of it different. Um, I, mostly, I, I have more love and I'm more gentle, I'm more kinder. That's usually what happens, you know, where I'm a lot more patient. Um, I have more long suffering. I, I, I want to show more grace and mercy to people. Um, I want to elevate people and speak life to people. I want to put the, the heart away. I want to clean up the table. I want to thank people that let me in. I want to do things that 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 glorify God. I just want to be filled with love. That's I'm glad you brought happens. that full circle. I was going to do the same thing. Yeah, like, like it, 
what I'm hearing you saying is if you've come face to face with God, you're not going to leave a shopping cart in yeah. the middle of the parking lot. Yeah. It just, it's just, things change. Yeah. It's just, you look at things different. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. All right, so let's continue reading in Genesis 29, and we're going to pick up in verse 14 and read down through 20. And it says, And Laban, Laban, I think I got it right, said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him a month. Wow. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what should your, what should your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful in form and appearance. You know, that's a biblical way of saying she was hot. Yeah, and Leah wasn't that hot. And Leah was not so hot. And and so, but again, so eyes are... Rachel was easy on the eyes, yeah. Leah, not so much. But beauty is in the eyes of beholder. That's true. And so he saw her, and he says, nah, her eyes are not that strong. But man, Rachel's eyes, <laughs> baby. <laughs> that's the way he looked at it. That's the way it is. It is what it is. Well, we know that because the very next... Um, verse, verse 18 says, Jacob loved Rachel. And he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served, served seven years for Rachel and they seemed, and they seemed to him, but a few days because of the love he had for her. That's so romantic. It is, but seven not, years, it seemed like just a blink of an eye. I could not for it for that long. Can you imagine? That's a long time. A long time. To look into her eyes, her seven, beautiful eyes for seven years seven and not years. be able to just right? kiss her and love her. I, I mean, maybe that happened, but I doubt it. They're, they were strict. Yeah, I don't think so. No, oh, that's tough. I don't think so. Ooh, man, good for Jacob. In fact, I'm sure of it. Because had that happened before... Yeah. Then the wedding night might that wouldn't have happened oh, the way yeah. it did. He would have yeah. known. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Truth. Truth. Yeah. Sorry to jump ahead. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Yeah. All right. During his first month in Laban's house, Jacob did his share of the work and was happy for every opportunity he had to be with Rachel. He was smitten. Yep. What Jacob didn't realize was that Laban was a master schemer who would control his life for the next 20 years. Oh, really? Jacob's had experience with master um, schemers before. Oh, yeah. He probably should have recognized this, but yeah. he was so yeah. uh, head over heels in love yep. with this Rachel girl. It was like the 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 trick, you know, the because he was the master schemer himself, yeah. where it was like the sleight of hand or like, hey, look at this pretty girl over here yeah. as I do the trick over here. He should yeah. have seen it coming. Yep. Jacob failed to notice that Laban made no promise that he would give Rachel to him at the end of the seven years. He only agreed to give him Rachel for his wife. That's funny. I mean, think about it. I mean, he didn't get into the specifics, sneaky, right? Sneaky, sneaky. In the old days, a handshake would have worked, but unfortunately, because of people like Laban, we need to have now have contracts in place so schemers can't take advantage yeah. of people. What we need lawyers for. And that's it. But once again, we see growth in Jacob's character here as he patiently served Laban in seven difficult years. Uh, shepherding isn't an easy vocation, and seven years is a long time, truthfully. I mean, let's just call it what it is. But Jacob's love for Rachel took the burden out of the work and caused the time to pass quickly. It's been said that happiness consists of having someone to love, something to do, and something to look forward to. Jacob had all three. Mm. So, I mean, it's, you know, maybe you're not married and you're like, well, I want to have something or whatever. I don't know. God is, God is still in charge. God could bring somebody in there, right? Um, God can bring somebody that you can love. Do you think? Sorry. Do you think this was a this was an unusual request for someone to come? Okay, work for me for seven years, and I'll give you my daughter. This probably he didn't like seem to blink at it at all. Like, okay, that, it's that makes sense. it had to be culture. It had to be culture. But also, right? we know that seven is a sign of completeness. So seven years in the Bible, whenever you see it, is a sign of completeness. So this was like a complete your this, and then you can marry. So. so it probably wasn't that crazy of a request. It didn't like catch Jacob by surprise so he's like okay yeah cool I'll, I'll part of it part of it could be like the dowry so they were he was working off the dowry he was working off you know hey you're going to be taking her away from my service so you should start you know you should do this to build up some some reserves for me but he didn't get seven he had 14 we're gonna see that now but i mean it's i mean there's a lot of a lot can of, you imagine you know, a young man in our culture working for dad, uh, working for dad for seven years so he'd have the right to marry his daughter <laughs> How would that fly? I, it would. It's just, I, I just can't even comprehend it. 
but we, it, we can't get that boy to take the shopping cart back. But I mean, but we do similar things in our own culture for certain things because it's just the way the culture is. It's certain standards. I can't think of like what? Right oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I yeah, thought you had something can't. in mind. No, but I know we do. I mean, common sense tells us we do. Well, we'll work 40 years to get a gold watch and yeah. two years of retirement. Yeah. We die. Yeah, whatever. I mean, there's stuff that we do. <laughs> That, you know, we'll think of it as we go through the show. I should have thought of it before, but there is definitely things that we do in our culture that they probably look at like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, that's no, just sure. crazy. And sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, that's all right. I don't like it when you do that to me. I shouldn't do it to you. It, it's okay. I don't care. <laughs> it's all good. All, all right. right. Continue reading in verse 21. It says, then Jacob said to, to Laban, give me my wife that I may go in into her for my time is complete. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob. He went into her. Laban gave his female servant Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her servant. And in the morning, behold, it was Leah. (laughs) He wakes up. Hello, surprise. And Jacob said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? Did I not serve with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, it is not so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Why didn't you tell me that before, fool? Right? All right. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Wait, I get two? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Jacob did, Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter, Rachel, to be his wife. Laban gave his female servant, Bilhah, to his daughter Rachel to be her servant. So Jacob went in Jacob went into Rachel also, and he loved Rachel more than Leah and served Laban for another seven years. That's just such the right way of saying they had sex. They went into I, it's hard to even like walk to say it because I I know that's what they're saying, but it yeah. just sounds weird. It's just such a it's a cleaner way. Yeah. <laughs> is it? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure it is. <laughs> it's almost it's a little more vivid, actually. Um Anyway, moving on. That's funny. The man who deceived his father was deceived by his father-in-law. And the man who passed himself off as the firstborn son now receives Laban's firstborn daughter to be his wife. It's it's funny how what goes around comes around, right? We, we <laughs> reap what got, we sow. That's got to be where that saying came from. It is. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's funny how, you know, if you guys don't know it's what we're talking about. It's funny for you. All right. It's so funny for Jacob. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, you need to go back for a few shows, go back through some of the Genesis shows we've done in the past. And we talk about this in context. And, and But here it is, fast forward, you know, what we reap, what we sow. Now, we got people here and say, wow, he got two wives for yeah. the price of one. Well, <laughs> actually, no. For the he, price of two. He got but four, actually. actually but we'll got, get into that in the future yeah, shows. Spoiler alert. <laughs> it's an inescapable law of life that we eventually reap what we sow. Revelation 6, 7, and 8. God in his grace forgives our sins when we confess them. But good, but God in his government allows us to suffer the painful consequences of those sins. This disappointment was just the beginning of the harvest for Jacob. There was much more to come. So... I know that I'm still reaping from past decisions in my life um, when it comes to certain things in my life. I'm still, I'm still unlearning some of those bad habits. I'm still, I'm still on the journey of, of learning what it means to, to be completely surrendered to God. I, I am a firm believer that we don't fully arrive until we arrive, until we get to heaven. I think, I think there's going to be a constant learning curve for us. The life's going to constantly continue to keep teaching us. God's going to continue to keep doing this. But it does go to say that when you make decisions today, and if you look at our, your decisions that you're going to make, and if you're not seeking God in that decision, or you're not surrendered to God for that decision, and you're just making the decision based off of feeling or what you want or what you think, know that if it's not God's perfect will, there's going to be consequences to that decision. You're going to reap what you sow. It's it's very wise for you to slow down in your decision making, take a step back, and just really seek God in it, and and really meditate on His truth before you move forward with that decision. And and it's it's vital. So it could be anything in life: your your next house, car, job, um, relationship, friends, uh, paying a bill, this whatever it is. It could be anything. 
That's why the Bible tells us that we we need to completely surrender everything unto him, that we need to completely be emptied of ourselves, broken in his presence, say, God, here's the decision that I have. What is it that you desire for me? And if you don't know, then seek counseling or seek brothers or sisters that are around you to, to work it together. And, and those brothers and sisters that are in your life, you need to look at it from God's perspective and get context, biblical context, and get biblical understanding of what the Bible is actually saying for you to do in your next step, especially if it's a major decision, because you will reap what you sow. Jacob deceived his dad in a major way. This is a major deal, okay? He went along with his mom. They deceived him. He deceived his brother. It was a major deal, okay? There was manipulation. This was a major life event for him. Fast forward now. This is a major life event. This is his wife. This is his future children. This is a major life event, but it's come fast forward. He was deceiver. Now he's being deceived. It's it's the same thing. It happens. We reap what we sow. You have to understand the law of God is that you will reap what you sow. So what I'm telling you right now, stop living in the flesh, <laughs> live in the spirit, seek God in all that you do and know him know his way, know his perfect will, so that your decisions moving forward, you're not going to reap the consequences of the flesh decision, but you're going to reap the consequences of the spirit and the blessing that comes with it. So good. I mean, yeah. God will forgive you, but that doesn't mean you're free of the consequences or the scars yep. from those decisions. Yep. And you carry those for the rest of your life until yeah. we're made perfect. Yeah, that's a beautiful, beautiful illustration right there that we really need to comprehend. All right, our next statement says Eastern women were kept fairly secluded and there were no such thing as dating. There was no such thing as dating in that culture. But surely Jacob that had, we know of. Yeah. Let's just leave it there. All right. But let's say you know Jacob surely had a chance to get to know Rachel and Leah, and Leah fairly well before or during those 7 years. Yeah, how did that work? You know, oh, you'll see her on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday because you guys are going to be working together, but you're going to have to work on that side of the track and she's going to work on that side of the track and you guys can see each other, but there's going to be a bunch of people looking at you guys while you're looking there's at There's a each chaperone. Other. Oh, I'm sure, sure they, they had chaperones back then. Yeah. Anyway. Why then was he so easily deceived on the wedding day? Good question. What I do think, you think I have an idea. What? Tell me. I think he was drunk. I don't know. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Granted, the bridal chamber was dark and the bride was veiled, and perhaps she didn't speak above a whisper. But intimacy in the marriage bed? How could Jacob not know who that woman was? That's the million-dollar question. It just, it's just weird, right? Let's speculate a little bit. How about that? That's okay. not some fun? Yeah, let's okay. have fun with it. All right. This has been the question for many years. Had Jacob celebrated too much and was just too exhausted to remember? Like, you know, there was a major day. He was so tired and he was like, oh, I got to do this. I don't think so. I think guys, I think guys get up for this. I was event. pretty exhausted on my wedding. So day. was I. It's a long, long day. Yeah. And I, I, I was too. And I don't think we did anything on our wedding night. So is that, is I bet that, that happens a lot. Yeah. So that, so maybe that was the case. You guys got a little inside scoop of Christine and I's uh, wedding night. More than we needed to know. There you go. All right. So or maybe he was just overcome by passionate love and didn't notice her face being covered up. I mean, think about it. That could be the case. Like, hey, she's covered her face up with her veil and whatever. And he's like, woohoo, you know, finally. It's finally time. Yeah. I mean, that could happen. Uh, maybe. Another question asked is, was Leah a um, a willing, I mean, uh, was willing a partner in the scheme or did she... Uh, did her unprincipled father force her to obey him? That's another question. Mm -hmm. I mean, she had, she could have said something, but she didn't. Was yeah. she willing in this or was there something more here? And or did, did she think that he was working for her the whole time? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, what, what was said, right? And well, that goes to the next question. And where was Rachel during the drama? Obviously, she knew that this was a conversation be her dad. Where's Rachel? Or did she? Maybe, the, maybe, maybe they did didn't know. Maybe that was, that was just a conversation between Jacob and him. And what's his name? Jacob and <laughs> Laban. Laban. <Yeah. laughs> and the girls didn't know. No, there's no way. We don't know. We just know that. You know, Jacob had to have been saying something. Hey, only <laughs> more years, girl. <laughs> we can imagine several possibilities, but there's really no way to know for sure. But those are good questions that you would ask. So if you're reading this and you're studying this, the exegesis of this, and you're studying this out, Ask questions. You know, what happened? I mean, if you don't get to an answer, that's okay. But at least you ask the questions and just say, God, what's, what are you saying here? What's going on? Right? So, all right. That's kind of the mindset. 
So let's move on. All right. Where are we? Statement. Eight. Where? Eight. Eight. Thank you. These are all good points. Had Leah so desired, she could have easily revealed the plot, but yeah. that would have embarrassed Laban before his guests and probably led to Jacob being banished from this home without his beloved Rachel. Then, for the rest of her life, Leah would have had to live with a disappointed sister and an angry father who would devise some means to get even with his elder daughter. So somewhere along the line, she agreed to do this with her dad. It seems that way. And now she's like, it's already, I've already given into it. I can't say anything now. Just got to go along with it. Yeah. Because it would cause way too much problems if I did say something. Oof. Yeah. Could you imagine the weight that bet. was on her at that time? Yeah. Or she was probably like, oh, I want to do this. That's a great idea, dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's do it. We don't know. So. Yeah, I doubt that. Yeah. All I know is this, your next statement. This is <laughs> so, what it is. Can you imagine if this was one of us and waking up on the first morning of our marriage and, and you see the wrong woman in your bed? Yeah. I, it's a mess. And revealing the scheme would not have been worth the consequences that came from it. It's, the bottom line is it, it, was a, it was a discombobulation of truth. It was <laughs> messed up. I feel that Leah was a willing accomplice here, happy to get a hardworking husband like Jacob. <laughs> this is my feeling. My opinion, read it how you want. Um, who would ha- inherit Isaac's wealth and enjoy the covenant? Remember, he's he's wealthy. Abraham to Isaac to him, he's wealthy. Right. So, I mean, as a girl, uh, Leah's like, okay, yeah. Certainly, she knew that Rachel would also be a part of the bargain. It it, it would seem like, because there was that conversation, so I'm they're saying she's a part of this, uh, but was willing to risk whatever problems might ensure. Another possibility is Leah could have borrowed some of her sister's clothes and even learn to imitate some of her personal mannerisms. That could have been the case. Uh, whatever it was, Leah was treating Jacob just the way he treated his father. Oh, you mean like putting animal fur on your yep. hands yep. to deceive your... Yep, yep. <laughs> what comes around goes around. Yep, Leah was treating Jacob just the way he treated his father when uh, he pretended to be Esau. So bad. So it's what goes around comes around. So, I mean, again, if if you don't think this happens in your life, you're fooling yourself. If you've, if you've made a path to not show grace and mercy to other people, when something happens in your life, you're not going to get grace and mercy shown back to you. When you've, when you've tried to deceive and to manipulate other people, when you look forward in your life, you're going to see the same thing happen to you. I, I'm telling you, it's, if, you, if you think we're lying, then you're fooling yourself because you need to look up and look out and see that this is the truth and you will reap what you do. So sow the spirit reap the spirit so the flesh reap the flesh. is what it is christine have a sister yeah right no <laughs> so you can't imagine that scenario no right? i can't even comprehend yeah it. no that's just crazy all right i already read statement nine i don't know if you wanted to talk anything about that and uh, my answer to your red stuff is no don't do that <laughs> right <laughs> I can't imagine this. This is, I mean, truthfully, this is the crazy story. We do know that among the Semitic people for seven days after their marriage, the bride and groom were treated like a king and queen. But Jacob must have felt more like the, the court gesture. Like, <laughs> what's going on? Laban made a fool of him, but there was nothing Jacob could do about it, for the father in the household was a supreme control. His scheming father in law had married off two daughters to a potentially wealthy man and secured another seven years' wow. service. From his son-in-law as a bonus. I mean, I wow. think this sounds like something Donald Trump would do. <laughs> I'm only following the law and the system that it's given. Is I mean, that right? that's all it is doing. I don't know that I would have gone there, but anyway. <laughs> all right, let's move on. How many daughters does he have? I guess he does have two daughters. Yep. All right. Jacob protested the way Laban had treated him and Rachel, but he meekly accepted his lot and went back to work for another seven years. Little by little, Jacob was learning to submit to God's loving hand of discipline and was growing in faith and character. Well, see, there's silver lining. Yep. I mean, that's, I mean, truthfully, if we surrender to God and over time and we don't fight it and we go through it, we're just going to, our character is going to grow. We're going to become more and more Christ-like. And it's just what happens. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. When God looked at us, he says, I want you to become more and more like me. And as I'm revealing my truth to you and, and, and you're growing spiritually and in fruit, I want you to pass that on to other people and disciples. That's what he's telling us. That's our whole, that's our journey. As God is teaching us, as God is, as we're growing in our, in grace and in, in mercy of God and just loving him and learning him, 
God is pouring in you, then you just go ahead and pour into somebody else and disciple somebody else. I mean, it's just multiplication happening. And then well, speaking of multiplication, I mean, through, through this ordeal, he ends up with 12 sons. Yep. And looks what happened. The whole world has changed because of it. Jacob protested the, the way Laban had treated him and Rachel, but he meekly accepted his lot and went back to work for another seven years. Little by little, Jacob was learning to submit to God's loving hand and of discipline and was growing in faith and in character. Oh, I just read your part. That's right. The, they got to hear it twice. Yeah. At the end of Leah's marriage week, Jacob married Rachel, the woman he loved, and had another week to live like a king. That's the way I looked at it. There you go. Hey, you got two weeks to live like a king. All right, live it up. But for then on, he would endure 13 years of hardship and conflict, not only because of his in-laws, but also because of his own wives and their maids. You think on that, that second wedding, he double-checked to make sure it was really Rachel? Well, wow. I mean, yeah, it was, <laughs> there was probably a different change in how I've approached it, for sure. But also because of his own wives and their maids, it's through pain and trials that we can grow closer to God, or we can draw further away from him. It's our choice. But fortunately, we know that Jacob drew closer to God and his character would become something God would use to advance his purposes for the world. Laban might have meant this to be evil, but God turns it. And, and again, he does it a lot. Yeah. When we recognize that, yeah, this might be a consequence of my decision, but if I surrender to God right now and just trust him, he will work all things together for good. And we yeah. know this for a fact. And uh, so maybe you're listening today and, and maybe you've been wrestling with God scenario. Maybe you've made a lot of bad decisions or maybe you've, you're reaping a lot of what you've sown and you're just like over it and you want to be free from it. Well, I can tell you this right now, you're, you're going to face the consequences, but there is a way to have peace in the midst of it. There's a way to have joy. There's a way to have, um, you know, a, a life of purpose, a life of meaning. And that is in Jesus because Jesus says, if you come unto me and you confess your sins unto me, that I will heal you. And I will, I will, I will forgive you of your sins and I will make you new and fresh. And then I will give you all of the grace that, that, that is bestowed upon you. I will give you the tools that are necessary to be able to navigate all of the circumstances, all of the things that you're going through. I'll heal you. I will heal those pains and those wounds in you. I will bring you peace and joy in the midst of your hardship and your pain. And uh, all you have to do is just surrender your life to him. You just have to believe that he died on the cross and rose again on the third day. You just have to believe that he is God. And, and when you come before him and you just cry out to him in prayer and you just say, oh, God, forgive me. Give me of my sin. Forgive me for my stupidity. Forgive me for my past mistakes. Forgive me for all of that. And God says, well, you're forgiven. I, I, I forgive your past mistakes, your present mistakes, and your future mistakes. And I will work all things together for good. And for you are called according to his purpose. <clears throat> and, and at that very moment, when you make that decision, God says, now stop living the way that you used to live. Now you repent of that. Now you churn, you change your course. You now, you now are doing the things that God would want. You start reading your Bible. You start going to church or getting involved in church. Um, you start, you get discipled. You do things that, that put you in a position to learn more about him and to be, uh, to, to be in his presence more because it's in his presence that we're changed. We just learned this about Jacob. Jacob was changed. His character was changed. Things were transformed when he became came into God's presence. When you do the same thing, your life will be changed. So if you did give your life to the Lord or in your heart right now, you just prayed that, the Bible says now all the angels in heavens are rejoicing with you. They're celebrating that you made this decision. And, and all God wants to do now is bless you exceedingly abundantly more than you think or imagine. And the way to do that is you got to press into him. You got to go confess him to all your friends. Confess him. The Bible says, if you confess me, before my father in heaven, I too will confess you or before your friends. I will too confess you before my father in heaven. But if you deny me before your friends, I too would deny you before my father in heaven. So don't deny him any longer. Press into him, read him, learn him, get, in, get involved in a church, find a church, a healthy Bible believing church. If you need help, call us, contact us. Bob, how could they get a hold of us? Yeah, great question, Pete. They, lots of ways. But the first thing you just go to our website, the riotpodcast.com. Lots of resources there. We would love to hear from you and help you out there. You can also just reach out to social media sites, whether it be um, X or or um, Facebook. You can comment right, right below if you if you're watching this on YouTube. How any of those different places, if you reach out to us, 
and ask us a question about, uh, you know, where do I find a great church or you have questions, we would love to be able to answer those for you and really love to hear that uh, you've decided to follow Jesus. That that would just bless our hearts yeah. um, more than you can even possibly imagine. So um, lots of different ways you can do that. And again, share um, share this podcast. If you're listening to it, just, just click the share button. Share it with somebody that you know. There's somebody in your life right now that God will put on your heart to share this with. And uh, we'd just be honored if you would do that for us as well. Pete, always fun. Uh Kind of in a in a fun mood today. Yeah, I liked it. Uh, it was a great show. A little, little crazy, yeah, it was fun. but uh, it was fun. And just remember, guys, return your shopping carts and use your turn signals. <laughs> if you learn nothing else from today's show. No, that's not true. Uh, well, you know, it is true. Yeah. But uh, it all just goes, you know, it's just demonstrating the kind of life that we should be yep. and, and and showing the love of our father everywhere we go. These are just little tiny things that don't, you know, they don't seem like much, yeah. but they make a they make a big difference. And believe it or not, people are watching you. Yep. Amen. So um, it's important. Yep. It really is. Amen. All right. Be blessed, everyone. Have a great week. This has been The Riot Podcast. If you liked what you heard today, please feel free to leave a comment and share it with your friends. See you back here next week for another episode of The Riot Podcast.